most of us have a problem with financial literacy. Our educational system does not teach financial literacy, and many people do not know where to begin learning about it on their own. When the responsibilities of adulthood begin to take hold, such as moving out on your own, getting a job, or starting a business, and even starting a family, it becomes of utmost importance. Even though keeping track of your finances is critical, it's easy to let it slip when you're juggling a slew of other priorities. Welcome to Billionista. If you love videos about luxury living, please subscribe and click the bell so you never miss a video. And don't forget to like and share too. Today, we are going to talk about 12 basic money skills that you should master in order to have a better financial status. Number 1. Nobody got rich from saving money. Moving up the economic ladder doesn't just happen because you have money saved, unless you're saving millions. When it comes to wealth creation, what you do with it is more important than how much you have. For two reasons, saving money is a good thing. Having three to six months worth of household expenses saved up in case of a loss of income is a good idea. The second benefit of having money is that it opens doors. With cash in hand, you can take advantage of a quality investment property or company opportunity that presents itself. Number two, make tax work for you. Small income earners tend to overpay their taxes because they are afraid of the taxman's arrival while the wealthy enjoy taxes, not because they don't pay them, but leveraging them to their advantage. We suggest you learn more about the tax system in your area and how tax incentives might help you preserve your assets. Tax benefits are frequently available to those who invest or save for retirement, whereas storing your money in a savings account, for example, may result in higher tax bills. Or it might be more advantageous to own a property within a trust or a company than owning the property in a personal capacity. With the money you save on taxes, you can put it to work for you instead of the government. 3. Learn how to use other people's money One of the most typical mistakes made by the average person is relying solely on their own savings. In general, people are afraid to take out loans because they don't want to end up in debt. The thought of going into debt for a new device or a vacation is clearly a bad one. The ability to obtain loans with reasonable interest rates, on the other hand, may allow you to boost your income. To update your property or acquire better equipment on a loan may lead to an increase in your rental fees or the ability to serve more customers. For example, if you offer a service that requires machinery or own property business. Regardless of whether or not your company forecast comes true, it is of the utmost importance that you will generate sufficient revenue to pay off the debt. Number 4. You need to earn more, not spend less. When money is tight, the solution to the problem is rarely to spend less. Instead, the most effective strategy for increasing one's financial standing is to increase one's earnings. It could be that this is accomplished through a raise, a work relocation, or even a side venture. It's also possible that your company has reached a plateau and requires a productivity boost. When you are willing to entertain the thought that there is plenty of money available in the world and that all you have to do is find ways to bring in more of it, you'll start to become more open-minded about the various ways in which you may bring in additional cash. Number 5. Know your dollar needs Now that you've made the decision to make more money, it's time to work out what you really need. Nowadays, the majority of banking apps allow you to categorize your expenditures, which results in a visually appealing histogram on a monthly basis showing where your money is going because our projections of how much we waste on things like entertainment and food are frequently off by a significant margin, this allows you to compare actual dollar and cent values for each category. Number 6. Have a retirement plan It's easier to retire early if you've saved money for it. Because most countries have a retirement pension plan for their workforce, 
this is referred to as a 401k in the US. Consider whether or not a private retirement fund would be more suitable for your needs if this is not the case where you are. Because most governments reward you for taking care of your future retirement and not becoming a burden on the state, there are a lot of tax advantages to saving for retirement. Investments in your retirement are never a bad idea because at the end of the day, you'll be able to cash them in. Investments with a long-term horizon rely on the power of compound interest. In other words, if you start saving when you're younger, you'll end up earning more interest. Before we proceed to the next one on the list, I just want to ask what topics you want us to discuss in our next video. Let us know in the comment section below because I want to hear from my viewers and get that conversation going. And now, back to the list. Number 7. How to safeguard your money People who wish to either preserve or increase their wealth have been diversifying their holdings for generations. Investing in gold, art, and property are perennially popular choices. People have found that buying prices, heirlooms, and collector's artifacts to store their cash in is a smart method to prepare for the possibility of economic turbulence. Theft or damage, if not stored properly, is the only actual concern here. Nevertheless, this is not a significant risk if the property is insured. The true danger to your wealth comes from keeping it all in one location. If the economy tanks, your country is struck with inflation, or there is an economic catastrophe, you could find yourself in a difficult financial situation. Having all of your financial assets managed by one bank in your native country may not be the best idea. Number 8. Make money while you sleep. You can earn money while you're sleeping, if you place it in the correct location, that is. If you have spent any spare money, put it in an interest-bearing account. In this manner, you can earn some interest while you make your next financial decision. Tim Ferriss is a legend when it comes to educating people on how to make their money work for them even while they're asleep. He describes his system in his book, The 4-Hour Workweek. Number 9. Use some sort of rule for your monthly income planning. A good rule of thumb is to spend 50% of your money on necessities, 30% on luxuries, and 20% on savings and investment. Number 10. Know what to look for in the T's and C's. Number 1. Banking fees. Bank fees are hard to avoid, but there are ways to reduce them. For starters, some banks will waive the monthly service cost provided you maintain your account with a particular amount of money in it. Keep an eye out for this and work to keep it. It can be worth the monthly charge to upgrade to the next level of account if it means not having to pay a fee for each transaction. Additionally, lounge access visits during airport travels, gym memberships, and free flights or points might help offset the cost of pricier packages. Number 11. Know what to look for in the T's and C's. Number 2. Credit cards. If you read the fine print, it's possible to use the credit card system to your advantage. Interest-free periods of up to 30 days are commonplace on a variety of credit cards. To put it in another way, this implies that as long as you clear the card back to zero every 30 days, you won't be charged a penny for the transaction fees and the safety net of having access to additional funds. Free travel insurance is offered by many credit cards for certain purchases, such as when you use your credit card to make your flight reservation. Make your credit card a money-saving tool by taking advantage of these benefits, rather than a pricey method of getting a loan. To avoid any inactivity fines, be on the lookout for any language mentioning them and choose a smaller item to purchase if necessary to avoid these. Number 12. Know what to look for in the T's and C's. Number 3. Investment Fees. The expenditure ratio is the primary fee on an investment. When investing in a mutual fund, this is the most usual scenario. In essence, this is the fee the manager charges to oversee the portfolio. It's a proportion of every dollar that you put into it. So if you put $1,000 into a fund 
with a 30 basis point expense ratio, you'll pay 0.3% of that $1,000 or $3. It may not seem like a lot at first, but remember that it all adds up and don't be afraid to negotiate. Expense ratios can range from 0.05% all the way up to 1% in extreme circumstances. So billionistas, what do you think about the tips? Do you find it helpful? Let me know in the comments. That's it for this time. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.